In the opening scene, a man named Terenzio rushes into a Brazilian airport. He is visibly panicking and is in a hurry. Most people would think he is missing a flight, but the truth cannot be further from that. He asks the help desk for any ticket to the west, but finds out the nearest one is two hours later. Still, he buys the ticket just for the sake of crossing the terminal. At the same airport, a famous influencer, Ines, is video chatting with a friend in New York when suddenly she chokes and falls unconscious. Ines is worried, especially since she cannot do anything to help her. Outside, people who are watching the TV see that the TV reporters and live show hosts have passed out in front of the camera. Not just that, but an entire street of people are lying unconscious on the ground. The viewers think it must be some kind of joke, except for Terenzio, who knows what is going on. He says it is time for him to act and rushes to the terminal. When a guard is distracted, Terenzio snatches his gun and asks everyone to get out of his way. He rushes to a flight that is about to take off to Moscow in a few minutes. Only some passengers have boarded the flight when he gets inside and holds everyone at gunpoint. The pilot is missing and the co-pilot, Matthew, doesn't want to help the terrorist. As they fight for the gun, a bullet hits Matthew's palm and injures him. Outside, the passengers panic and the flight attendant, Gabrielle, tries to keep them calm. Terenzio comes out of the cockpit, asking if there is a pilot on board. A woman named Sylvie gets up, although she is only a retired helicopter pilot. Under Terenzio's order, she and Matthew take off with all other passengers. The avionics are broken because of the bullet, and as a result, no one from the plane can contact anyone outside. When the plane is airborne, Sylvie and Matthew try their best to reason with Terenzio, but the man remains adamant. He says that he is an officer assigned to NATO, and no knows something that they don't. Upon being urged, he reveals that the rays of the sun have become deadly. Starting the next day, the sunrise is going to kill everyone, even those who stay indoors. This has already started in eastern countries like Japan and Korea, and the plane will be the next target if the sunrise catches up with them. Matthew and Sylvie do not believe him and theorize that he is mentally ill. Terenzio also acknowledges that he might seem like an idiot, but claims that he is not. Matthew's hand is bleeding profoundly, which might cause a problem in the long run. One of the passengers named Laura is a home health nurse for an old man with dementia. She is the only medical professional on board, so she takes the responsibility to to help the pilot. They have no sewing kit to close the wound, so they use a hot knife. Matthew screams in pain, and the passengers panic even more. Matthew knows that if they start to protest, everyone's life will be in danger. Hence, he tells them that they will land at a different location, as per Terenzio's wish, before continuing their way to the original destination. Matthew hopes that the fighter jets are coming to rescue them, since they were taken at gunpoint. But for some reason, Sylvie feels like they are on their own. A passenger named Ayaz has heard them talk about the sun and is suspicious that the pilot is lying to them. Suddenly, an Arab passenger starts coughing and falls unconscious. Ayaz pretends to be helping him and then snatches Terenzio's gun in the process. Terenzio is locked inside the toilet at Ayaz's order, and Matthew is asked to tell the truth. The pilot discloses they are landing in Iceland because Terenzio wanted to go somewhere west. There, the police will arrest the terrorist, and the others will be let free. He also tells them about the sun and how Terenzio thinks it will kill people. This sends the passengers into a frenzy. They start recalling strange things that happened before they boarded the flight and are worried about their families. Matthew calms everyone and takes the responsibility to save them all as the captain. A while later, he tries to land in an airport in Iceland, but gets no signal from traffic control. When they can see the ground close up, they notice several airplanes have crashed into each other, and people are running around. They finally register that Terenzio was telling the truth, but since the runway is blocked, they cannot land. The plane only has enough fuel to fly a bit west to Scotland. Hence, the captain decides to do so and hope for the best. He brings Terenzio out of the toilet, so the man can tell everyone what is going on. He discloses that he found out about the sun by eavesdropping on his senior's conversation. He doesn't know why it is happening, or if it will stop anytime soon. All he knows is that if they want to survive, they will have to fly away from the sunrise. Meanwhile, the Arab man who passed out earlier is still on the floor. He has a hard time breathing and is about to go into cardiac arrest. With his last breaths, he says that he swallowed diamonds. The nurse Laura tries her best to pull the diamonds from his ass. I, I mean to save him, but her attempts go in vain. 
At the same time, they go through an emergency landing in Scotland, where Matthew stops the plane seconds away from hitting a wall. They go outside, and their phones start chiming with notifications from their loved ones. The internet is filled with news about deadly sunlight. Half of the world has died, and the other half is waiting for their death. The airport is empty because everyone who had the chance to run away has fled, and the others are hiding in dark places, hoping that it will protect them. However, the news suggests that people are dying even inside bunkers. Suddenly, they are approached by three RAF servicemen asking for help. They only have 45 minutes before sunrise, so they decide to collect important supplies and fly west. One of the passengers is an aircraft engineer, Jacob. He wants to go back to his pregnant wife to save her, but for the overall safety of the passengers, he is asked to step back. After collecting supplies and filling the airplane's tank, they take off one more time. One of the servicemen is a pilot and suggests they fly away from the equator to avoid the sun catching up to them faster. Their next stop is Canada, where they will fuel up the airplane again and fix the radio. A while later, the internet is fixed, and their phones all begin to chime. They receive the last messages from their loved ones, who have already died in Brussels. Then, a man finds an article saying that the cause of the disaster is the sun's polarity. Another passenger named Horst is a climate specialist and knows what a sun's polarity means. He explains that every 11 years, the sun's magnetic field reverses, but no one knows why. It has no significant effect on the world, so not much research has been done. However, over the past few decades, the intensity of the reversal was growing weaker. Because of this, Horst thinks the reversal has become much more powerful in the other direction. If what he is saying is true, the Earth is being blasted with gamma rays everywhere the sun falls, which is why people are dying instantly. They have no way to prove the theory because the scientists who published the article are also probably all dead. Right then, Ayaz finds out a news report saying that the RAF servicemen they picked up are actually terrorists from Afghanistan. They were arrested and were being brought back to their country at the airport. Outside, one of them gets into an argument and pushes the old man who has dementia. It causes his death and gains the terrorist the passenger's disapproval. Being a terrorist is cool, but pushing old people, dude. Sylvie tells Matthew about the news report, and the two decide to abandon the terrorists when they land in Canada. A few minutes later, they land and have two hours before sunrise. Several victims of the sunlight lie around in the city. The terrorists are asked to look for repair radio parts in the nearest shop. They agree, but insist on taking Gabrielle and Jacob with them. The problem is that Jacob knows about the plan, but not Gabrielle. Hence, when they are in the shop and Jacob locks the terrorists in a room, Gabrielle refuses to come with him. Jacob doesn't waste any time trying to convince her. In the end, he makes it to the airport while being followed by the terrorists, but Gabrielle is left back in the city. The airplane takes off without her. The terrorists follow it and are able to hit a window with a bullet. Fortunately for the passengers, it only creates a crack, so if they maintain a level altitude, it will not break. A terminally ill kid named Dominic is also on the flight. Ayaz tries to chat with him, but his overprotective mother, Zara, asks the man to go away. Suddenly, they get a radio signal from someone in Hawaii. The conversation is cut short, but they assume that some survivors are staying in an underwater bunker, which is why they are alive. Matthew wants to leave for Hawaii as soon as possible, but Sylvie thinks going there because of an unclear message would be stupid. Meanwhile, Terenzio is furious that the captain gets to make all the decisions. He protests, and everyone comes to an agreement that they will vote to make a decision from now on. Just when things start to calm down, several alarms ring at the same time, indicating an aircraft malfunction. Upon analyzing the problems, Matthew learns that one of the terrorists who was following the plane earlier has somehow attached himself to the landing gear. If he remains there, they will not be able to land. Hence, Matthew decides to fly as high as possible, so the temperature and lack of oxygen will take him down. However, he fails to consider the cracked window. Because of the pressure difference, it breaks, causing chaos inside the plane. Things fly into the sky as the passengers brace themselves for impact. Matthew quickly brings the plane to a lower altitude, and Jacob uses a wooden board to close the window for some time. Everyone calms down, but Dominic has trouble breathing because his respiratory tube flew away. Ayaz thinks of a plan and uses the oxygen pipe to make a respiratory tube. Zara is thankful and ashamed that she was mean to Ayaz earlier. 
The captain tells everyone that Hawaii is no longer an option because they will never reach there on time at this altitude. The most feasible option would be to land in Attu, an Alaskan island. Moreover, the turbulence wasn't able to get rid of the hanging terrorist. This guy would be Superman if he wasn't, you know, a terrorist. Iaz, Jacob, and Terenzio go to the undercarriage and make a hole on the plane's floor to get a view of him. Terenzio uses his gun to point into the dark, but the criminal pulls it and almost kills him. Luckily, Iaz comes to his rescue and shoots the terrorist dead. He becomes their hero for a few minutes before the passengers find out that he was the reason the Arab passenger died. They bury his body back in Canada, where a guy saw Ayaz cut his stomach open. Ayaz confesses he is a con artist who was smuggling diamonds from Brussels to Moscow. The diamonds were inside the Arab man's body with his consent, but he died because he didn't follow the panicking instructions. On hearing the confession, some passengers protest that Ayaz should be abandoned like the terrorists, but the overall vote falls in Ayaz's favor. As a result, he is handcuffed in the avionics bay. In the following scene, they land in Alaska and refill the tank again before taking off. Once airborne, the climatologist Horst discovers something strange. The fruits they picked up in Canada taste like they have no flavor. He thinks it is because the gamma rays are so intense that they are remodeling the atomic structure of the food. The most concerning part is that it decreases the nutritional value of the food. If this goes on, they will starve to death in a few weeks. The science in this movie is out of control bullshit. Matthew acknowledges the danger, but claims that their primary concern should be running away from the sun. He has started to lose control of himself in the past few hours. Sylvie asks him to take a rest, but he yells at her, which is unlike his normal self. The passengers decide to force him to rest and bring him outside the cockpit. Although annoyed, Matthew promises to sleep for the next few hours. A while later, they pick another signal on the radio and hear two parties talking, but the group only hears them say, Stara 17. They soon figure out that the person talking on the phone is a cosmonaut in space. They are shocked that someone like that is alive, but this also means he is talking to the control room, which is on the Earth. With renewed hope for survival, they decide to go to NATO headquarters in Brussels, where it all began. At this rate, they will have four hours after they land in Brussels until the sun comes out. Hence, they might find some information about the secret bunker in the headquarters with Terenzio's help. Outside, Laura finds Matthew unconscious in the toilet. It turns out that the injury on his palm has been infected and caused blood poisoning. This is why he had been acting the way he did earlier. To solve the problem, they have to amputate the infected tissue. Laura says she can do the operation in Brussels if they manage to reach a hospital. However, without Matthew, Sylvie cannot land the plane on her own. The passengers beg her since she is the closest thing to a pilot they have, but she knows that she can only land a helicopter. Horst makes her understand that if she doesn't take initiative, everyone is going to die. Following that, Sylvie is made to watch a few videos on how to land a plane. However, when she has to actually do the work, she panics. An aggressive turbulence hits, and everyone braces themselves for the worst. In the end, they go through a shaky landing. But other than that, both the plane and the passengers are safe. Everyone claps for Sylvie and enjoys the moment of achievement amidst the disaster. Not wasting much time, they divide into three groups to do different tasks. Two men stay at the airport to refill the fuel. Zara, Laura, and her group bring Matthew to the nearest hospital, while Terenzio, Ayaz, and a man named Rick go to the NATO headquarters. At the hospital, they find numerous dead bodies blocking hallways. By the looks of it, people were informed about the deaths before sunrise and were trying to save their lives. Laura orders everyone to ignore the chaos and focus on saving Matthew. At the same time, Zara fills her bags with medicine for her son and for the others. Meanwhile, at NATO headquarters, Terenzio shows them the conference room where he first heard about the disaster. They cannot go through all the papers with the time they have left, so Rick decides to see if the surveillance footage has something. While he is away, Terenzio makes fun of Ayaz's Turkish descent, and the two get into a fight. Nothing like racism at the end of the world. He accidentally hits it's Ayaz, causing him to fall unconscious and bleed heavily. Somewhere else, Rick finds a recording of the officials talking about a bunker under a dam in Bulgaria. The place's name is Stara 17, the same thing they heard on the radio a few hours ago. Before he can go back to the guys, Terenzio comes to him and tells him that Ayaz has already left. 
Rick sees Ayaz's body lying in a pool of blood on the screen, but is too scared to speak. Half an hour before the sunrise, everyone boards the plane. Matthew is not in his best state, but feels better after the surgery. Terenzio tells everyone that Ayaz drove away before them, but they can no longer wait for him to return. With heavy hearts, they start the engines, when suddenly, a car stops in front of the plane, and Ayaz comes out. In the following scene, Terenzio is being handcuffed in the avionics bay. Sylvie tells everyone that if the Bulgaria plan doesn't work, they won't have enough fuel or time to reach another destination. When they touch down, everyone must be ready because they will only have 20 minutes to drive to the location of the bunker. Ayaz is in the toilet when suddenly, he gets a seizure. It lasts only for a few seconds and he thinks it is because he has lost too much blood. However, he refrains from telling the others. When he comes outside, he is asked what he wants to do with Terenzio. Not wanting to sentence him to death, he allows the guy to come with them to the bunker. A while later, they land at a Bulgarian airport and separate into two groups riding two different vehicles. Sylvie drives the first car and leads the way, while Ayaz drives the second one. On the way, he gets a seizure again, causing them to crash. The first car has already driven far away, and the group has no way to keep up in the short time. At an intersection, Sylvie takes the right turn and reaches a half-open gate. A passenger tries touching it and is sent flying because of the electricity. Moreover, it turns out that they have to continue pressing a button for the gate to stay open. To redeem himself, Terenzio offers to wait for the others, while Sylvie and the group go inside. Before leaving, Sylvie handcuffs him to the stand so he won't betray them. It also confirms that he will only be free when the other group arrives. However, Ayaz and the group take a left turn at the intersection and reach a similar gate from the other side of the dam. They use their clothes to climb up and beyond the entrance. In the end, they all reach the entrance to the bunker, even though they took different exits. The passengers are finally received by military men, who welcome them inside and affirm that they are safe here. Terenzio is left alone, asking God for forgiveness. As the sun rises, he stands facing it and asks it to do its best. In the end, he is also killed.